Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Enrico Livelli. Uh, I'm with Roman. Uh, let's talk about the uh, after NoSQL Discover Cloud SQL databases. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Enrico Livelli. I'm working at emilsuccess.com and magnews.com. I'm really open source enthusiast and co contributing to several ASF projects like um, Bookkeeper, Dookeeper, Curator, the Posa Stack, and Maven. You can find me on Twitter and on GitHub. Um, my colleague Roman will introduce himself when I when it's time. Uh, so what we have in our agenda? Uh, we will talk about RDB. Uh, we will see the advantages and uh, challenges for an embedded SQL database. Uh, we will run through the RDB model and how replication works. Uh, we will see uh, a few benchmarks results with the, the Yahoo benchmark suite. Uh, then we will talk about the JPA, the Java Persistence API, uh, the JPI challenges. Uh, how can you use JP, Open JPR with uh, RDB? and the challenges in switching from H2 database to RDB. Uh, okay, so let's talk about RDB. RDB is a distributed SQL database written in Java. It's uh, open source, it's Apache 2 licensed, and you can find it on GitHub with full JDBC support. Uh, it speaks a MySQL compatible dialect uh, you can run it embedded in the host client application uh, and in standalone mode, but uh, we will talk about more uh, running the database together with the client application. Uh, supports high availability and horizontal scalability. We will talk about replication later. Uh, let me give you a brief overview of RDB history. Yes, because just another database, why? The project started inside emailsuccess.com as a replacement for MySQL. Email Success is an MTA, a mail transfer agent like SendMail or Postfix, but it's written in Java and it uses a database to store message state. Email Success um, was designed to, uh, to deliver um, huge volumes of messages and so performance is very important for email, email success. In 2016, we started the development of an email success cl cluster version, and we needed a better solution for storing message state. Um, what, what were the um, our requisites? Um, we wanted an embedded database. Uh, the database should should run together with this the Java application, or uh, you know, like SQL like or H2 database, but we wanted a real database that can um, manage in production uh, several gigabytes of data. Uh, and just yes, because w when you uh, installed email success in the first versions, you had to deal with email success and MySQL. Uh, it would be very easier to just manage only email success or your application. And we wanted a replicated database and the database, we wanted it to scale out and offer high availability automatically. Uh, in theory, and this is practice, in practice with uh, emailsuccess.com, uh, in order to scale out email success and RTB, you just only have to add the nodes and the application and all of the other components automatically scale. Uh, we are talking about not using uh, Docker or Kubernetes. Uh, you can use it uh, just a very simple Java application. Solution were already present on the market, uh, but nothing could meet both of the two requirements. So an embedded database, a distributed database. 
um, we already have uh, uh, users in production and not only email success. Uh, of course, uh, it, you, email success.com in standalone, single machine, and in cluster mode uses RDB um, for uh, storing data. Uh, it is only uh, also the um, database for Apache Pulsar Manager. Uh, it's the default database. Uh, Apache Pulsar Manager runs on RDB and on Postgre. Um, we are using it uh, as metadata service on Blobit. It's a binary large object storage uh, based on Apache Bookkeeper. Uh, as a configuration and certificate store for a Carapalas Carapaz proxy server. It's a reverse proxy, a HTTP reverse proxy. And we're using it as a MySQL replacement in a few other non-open source internal products at dna.com. It's my company. Uh, there is also another kind of usage of RDB. It's a RDB collection framework, and we are using it on magnus.com. I will talk about it later. So let's talk about or embedding the database in the client application. You, you, you are not required to run RDB uh, in this way. You can run it standalone, you can deploy, but let's talk about embedding it in the client application. This is very common for RDB. The advantages, uh, you do not need initial deployment or management tools for the users. In the case of email success, it is really easy to install email success. It's only one program. Um, you don't have to um, manage a separate uh, entity system. Uh, the database is totally hidden to the user. You have to only manage the application. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, in products, uh, uh, you know, uh, I want to install an application full, uh, full bar, uh, uh, but uh, you need the Postgre, you need MySQL. Uh, it is really easier to have on one single bundle. And the application is tested with only one version of the database, and it is the same as in production. Um, Usually, uh, if you depend on MySQL or SQL Server or, or whatever other, other uh, database technology, uh, probably you're going to write unit tests uh, uh, with uh, H2 database, and then you are running in production on with MySQL. Um, and also, in the case of your success, for instance, we have to maintain the compatibility to, with the matrix of versions of MySQL. Uh, that is really, uh, really big. Um, but yes, if you can uh, test the application with RDB and you can run it in production, uh, the same code, the same SQL dialect, it, it is really uh, simple to work. It is easier to test for developers. You can run the database in memory for unit tests. Uh, if you have to run um, integration tests, you have to start MySQL and then run your tests and then tear down. Uh, you can run the same database that you are using in production uh, in your unit test. But A, it's not so simple to handle a database together with the application. You have to deal with memory management. Yes, because the database cannot use all of the heap, uh, all of the resources of the client application. Um, in particular, uh, RDB, uh, one of the most important features of RDB is to be able to set a, a, a limit on the um, amount of uh, heap memory that the database is using. And this way, you are sure that it won't eat all of the heap of your application. Um, also, it is not not very easy to tune the JVM if you run the database together with the application. It's not easy, but especially for uh, um, simple applications, um, it, it it is really really useful to have this set up. You have to have to provide sensible defaults and enable automatic management routines by default. Uh, yes, because the application 
the developer of, of the application uh, will focus the attention on the application. And if the database is just only a library for you, uh, probably you, you won't care that much. And also, um, usually when you are running MySQL or other uh, standalone databases separate from the application, uh, you, you have probably someone that is an expert for the database and is going to tune it. Uh, but if the database does not exist, it, there is only your application, okay, the database sh should work uh, well out of the box. It must provide all of the tunables, all of the configuration parameters to, to make it work uh, really perfect for your wor workload. But out of the box, it should work. Um, while uh, developing RDB, you have to handle upgrade procedures totally automatically without manual intervention. Uh, that's because uh, the database is just a li library for the application developer. So probably the application developer will will think about rolling upgrades uh, and upgrade procedures. Uh, and if the database needs some kind of uh, um, change to the disk format, uh, some upgrade internal rewriting of, of data structure, uh, everything is to be uh, totally automatic and transparent. Uh, also, you have to, when we have to pay much attention to the web protocol, uh, to not introduce protocol changes or to these formats, because yes, as you can upgrade the database just by uh, changing the, the version in your Maven POM file, but you can also roll back. Uh, and, and also, in a cluster, um, you have to pay much attention uh, to what is happening during the, the upgrade of the nodes of the cluster. And again, if the application is bundled together with the database, uh, um, you are going to uh, update the application and upgrade the database at the same time. Um, replication, high availability and scalability. Um, you know, uh, we are talking about working even in case of temporary or permanent loss of machines. Um, you also would like to keep data closer to the clients. Uh, let me explain more this topic. Um, you have a cluster of machines, say um, four or five nodes, uh, um, but the application is running on the, these machines and the database as well. And you would like that the data that the application, that, that each node of the application is uh, working more uh, uh, frequently, uh, moves near to the application. Uh, this is actually possible in email success, for, e for instance, um, because, um, yes, uh, the database can be moved nearby the, the users of the tables. Uh, you also do not want shared disks or network file systems. Uh, you only want, you know, that the network is uh, connecting the nodes of your application, and this should be enough. Uh, you would like to be able to scale out just by adding machines to the application and deal only with the application and not the database. Uh, this is true, for instance, in Carapace proxy, or even in email success, you add the nodes to the reverse proxy, and then you have more uh, uh, scalability in the database. Replication and the availability uh, challenges for uh, embedded database. Uh, yes, if you're running the database together with the application, uh, you have to handle gracefully uh, temporary failures, long GC pauses for the application, or the database, or simply the application restart. Uh, yes, because if the operator uh, restarts the application, he is also restarting the database. And in the cluster, uh, if you restart one node of the database, 
uh, probably uh, this will have an effect uh, other nodes so will have to uh, become responsible for that part of the database so uh, the system must be tuned and be able to deal with this as much as gracefully possible you need some external source of truth uh, in this case we are using apache zookeeper uh, yes because uh, if uh, any of the nodes of the application may disappear or uh, crash uh, we need some reference and so uh, in the case of rdb uh, you can run a zookeeper um, nodes on the same machines but not together with the application this is not suggested also it's not trivial to understand the storage topology uh, because uh, data uh, flows through the right eye log uh, in bookkeeper and the data have uh, separate replication mechanisms because uh, in the right path you are writing to bookkeeper and bookkeeper um, replicates synchronously data and then uh, all of the data will eventually be replicated to the other nodes i'm not to going to talk more uh, um, more deeply about the replication rdb but if you are interested you can check it on on github on the wiki or you can ask on the mailing list and we will be happy to to share uh, let let's see uh, the internal structures of herd b uh, the database is partitioned into table spaces a table space is a group of table very like to a database in mysql world but in a rdb you only have one database and table spaces yes because with only one data source or jdbc url one single java sql connection in terms of jdbc you can connect to multiple table spaces and servers so the driver automatically uh, understands that you are going to um, to ask for data on uh, table space and connect to the the right servers with a single java sql connection uh, transactions um, transactions must span tables of the same table space this is by design because basically table space is the right log with tables and so uh, all of the changes in the transaction must belong to the same uh, right log so if you start a transaction you start writing data um, you can only touch tables from the same table space and joins uh, queries um, cannot refer to tables of the same table space um, this is only a limitation um, for efficiency uh, we could um, implement really easily uh, cross table space uh, joins but <laughs> actually no one uh, ever asked for it uh, a table space uh, must reside entirely on every machine assigned to it uh, this is only for fair performances uh, this is the standard mode of rdb um, during the summer we released a new model for rdb that stores data on bookkeeper and in this in that case the data will be on bookkeeper and not on rdb machines a table uh, a table in rdb is just only a key value dictionary that maps a byte array to a byte array but clients use jdbc api and sql language and so uh, we created a sql layer on top of the key values structure the key is the primary key of the record and the value is the is made of uh, all of the other columns uh, um, the primary key and, and columns are serialized uh, in, in a way that it is easy to access data um, without uh, uh, performing copies in memory we are using apache call site for sql work for the planner the parser and the planner but we also we are also working on a smaller jsql parser, parser based stack uh, with apache call site you have the full power of sql 
and you have the, that great uh, cost-based optimizer, the Volcano Planner. But Calcite is very big and it, it comes with lots of third-party dependencies. And sometimes only with, for only uh, very simple queries, you, you don't need all of the power of Apache Calcite. So we are working on a smaller stack. Um, a table, a table uh, is made of uh, data pages. Um, a, a database is only a bunch of records indexed by the primary key. We have the core data structure in RDB, that's the primary key index, is basically a B-link tree, uh, and that maps a primary key value to the ID of the data page. And we have the dirty page buffer, it's a, a data page or more than one, that is open for write. And secondary indexes uh, simply map values, indexed values, to the set of primary key values that uh, are bound to that values. Uh, this way, when you move um, a record from a page to another page, um, you do not have to update secondary indexes. Uh, for instance, RDB collection framework uses the, directly the key value structure without the SQL layer. Um, it, it's like uh, MapDB. Uh, the only the very big difference with uh, MapDB is uh, uh, that RDB has this internal um, hard me limit on memory. Um, so uh, you can basically start a Java map um, and you can set a maximum usage of Java IP. Uh, let's talk about briefly about the replication, how it works. Uh, an RDB cluster is made of RDB servers, Apache Bookkeeper servers, the bookies, and uh, Apache Zookeeper servers. Uh, you can use existing Bookkeeper server um, cluster, uh, like if you are running Apache Pulsar or, or other products. For instance, Email Success runs a Bookkeeper cluster and also Magnus. You can uh, you can use them. Uh, each table space elects a leader node. So for each table space, you have a, a list of replica nodes. One of them is elected as leader. Uh, we are using Bookkeeper uh, that guarantees the consistency of the cluster. And Bookkeeper handles metadata and provides service discovery both for RDB and for Bookkeeper as well. Uh, very briefly how the replication path works. Um, clients talk only to the leader of the table space. They use Zookeeper for service discovery. And uh, when they run chain um, DML, data man manipulation language uh, statements, uh, the changes are written to the bookies that represent the vital log. So Bookkeeper uh, replicates data synchronously and then acknowledges the write to the leader node. And the other nodes, the replicas of the table space, uh, simply tail. They continuously follow, read the log, and apply the changes locally. Uh, it's uh, simply uh, asynchronous replication. And when a follower is promoted to leader, it uh, leverages a feature of Bookkeeper. It's fencing and basically the old leader uh, is fenced out and cannot uh, um, make progress in uh, updating the, 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 uh, the contents of the table, uh, even in case of uh, split brains and partitions. And so the overall consistency of the system is always uh, preserved. Uh, just one slide about uh, benchmarks. Uh, when we switched from MySQL to RDB in email success, uh, we uh, do not care about performances and we used the uh, ES ECSB uh, benchmarks and also uh, internal email success benchmarks. But as you can see in this slide, uh, this slide uh, um, refers to RDB uh, 0 0.19 and MySQL 5. Uh, 0.7 uh, on bare machines, uh, bare metal machines on SSDs, uh, disks, and Java 13. 
and as you can see, um, well, RDB outperforms MySQL in uh, all of the workloads, uh, but we more cared about the latest workflow, it's the main success uh, workload. Um, uh, yes, and we are constantly uh, running these benchmarks uh, in, inside the development of uh, image success in order to be sure that the, any kind of changes to RDB does not impact the uh, um, performances. And so it's time uh, for Roman. Hello everyone. Um, I'll present myself uh, very quickly. So um, I'm a contributor and committer at Apache since uh, a lot of years now. Um, and I'm working now for uh, UPIC, which is a company company doing uh, let's say lots of services around uh, Apache to summarize it. Um, about uh, RDB, uh, I discovered it some uh, months ago, I think now. Uh, when Enrico spoke about it to me. And um, I was interested about it uh, mainly because uh, we we have an application uh, which is using a database for referential data. And the main issue with this kind of uh, architecture is uh, you need a database for uh, a small amount of data. Um, so what's interesting with RDB is you get uh, full tolerance uh, scalability, etc., uh, without having to pay for a real database, which is quite expensive. Um, yeah. So uh, the part I uh, I have now is mainly uh, about the journey to make RDB uh, GDBC driver compliant with a GPA, uh, because that's what most applications uh, are using. So. Um, so GPA stands for Java Persistence a API. Uh, it's mainly uh, the Java EE uh, API to bind the database on a Java model on PostGIS. Um, GDBC on the, other, on, on the other end stands for Java Database Connectivity. It's just the connection to the database and the way to uh, issue statements to the database. So. Um, Naturally, GDBC is lower level than GPA, and GPA is built on top of GDBC. Today, a lot of applications are using uh, GPA because it's simpler to code and it integrates better with frameworks because it is based on Pojo, so it works with mappers, with uh, uh, automatic discovery of, uh, of the model, with schemas, etc. Whereas, if you are using GDBC, you need to write it in string or do it manually. Another thing which is interesting with uh, GPA is it is portable across databases. So if you write code, you can run it on MySQL, on Oracle, on RDB, etc. So really the goal is to be able to run uh, with GPA uh, using a RDB database. It's not really a question. So um, in terms of setup, or the change from an application using GPA to an application using GPA with RDB. Um, it does not need a, anything specific actually. So you don't change your code, that's one of the goal and it's reached. You don't change your, the configuration except the database connection indeed. But if you run it just like that, it does not work. So if you run on uh, Hibernate for instance, it will not work because RDB is not known by uh, Ibernet. So the challenges we encountered, starting to work on that, um, were mainly about the fact GPA runtime, so Ibernet, Eclipse Link, or OpenGPA, uh, is issuing uh, SQL statements. So it is converting the Java code, the Java model, the Pojo's, to statements. And this conversion seems portable and just using SQL, it is portable, right? But actually it is not because uh, all databases have custom types. So uh, Varchar in one database can be a Varchar uh, 255 in another one. It can be uh, something else in another database. 
uh, we have specific functions, we have specific uh, escaping delimiters, things like that. That's why all um, implementations of uh, specification uh, GPA um, are abstracting this layer. So the conversion between the Java model and the statements. So for Hibernate, it is a dialect. For uh, OpenGPA, it is a dictionary. For Eclipse Link, it's a platform, but it's just an abstraction to create the statements. Another thing which is important is that uh, GPA is handling relationship. You can say uh, this POJO is, is in relationship with this one, uh, one, one N relationship, uh, NM, etc. And it is using joints to translate it in SQL. So joints must, must be supported by uh, uh, the RDB driver. And when surprise we got was that uh, RDB is expecting lowercase uh, values for the columns and tables. Uh, whereas if you check all the dictionaries of OpenGPA, they are all case insensitive. It was a, a small point we, we had to face. And finally, uh, databases have reserved keywords or words. Uh, so either you prevent your application to use these words, like a user, for example, which is often reserved, or you delimit all uh, columns and table names to ensure there is no conflict with reserved words. Um, in our case, we pick the delimiters. We'll see it uh, later. So a quick example. So I have a table, an entity, uh, which has almost nothing except a few fields and tags and tags like in a blog. So it's, it's a collection table. So automatically GPA will create a table in relation, in, in relationship to the entity. Uh, and we can ask to GPA to automatically create these tables. We don't have to do the DDL ourselves. So typically, uh, if we ask a GPA to create the tables, it will issue this kind of statement. So create table for the entity, no big surprise, except we can see that there are the types of the columns. And uh, we can see, oh, it's too small. Yeah, it, it's not very important. Not sure you can zoom, is it better? Yeah. So uh, we can see that there are the type, uh, some constraint, but uh, we can also see the tag table created automatically. It is not in the code, it is just in the, uh, in the database. And we can see it is creating uh, an identifier column to the entity and element is the value of the tag. So indeed, functionally, you can guess uh, you'll want the tags for an entity. So to do that, it will do something like select, select all tags uh, where the entity ID is. Uh, to be efficient, it needs an, an index. So it also creates the required index. So all that is the, it's created by the GPA layer, but it means the RDB driver must uh, be able to understand all these statements. Uh, yeah, and then it handles indeed the crude statements. So insert, update, select, delete. Uh, just what's interesting in these statements is the fact that the value are bound. Uh, that's one reason to use GPA over uh, GDBC because you can't get the temptation to bind directly values in, in uh, statements. It is done by the framework automatically in a secure way. So no SQL injections. And we can see it is uh, expanding the columns of the table. So for instance, in the select, we have all the fields selected and we don't have a select star. So to be able to support FDB out of the box without any tuning work, uh, tuning work because it can be done uh, because OpenGPA is very flexible, but it's a bit bothering. Uh, we created a RDB dictionary. So 
In terms of configuration, the persistence.xml, which is the entry point for the uh, GPA uh, creation of an entity manager, which is the base to create any query or persist data. Uh, there is nothing specific in this persistence unit, which is a big win. If you don't have a specific dictionary for your database, you need to configure explicitly there a property specific to your provider, Hibernate, OpenGPA, or Eclipse Link, saying it will be this dictionary with this configuration. So this part is fine. And when we start, we can see that OpenGPA is starting indeed, but we can also see it is deducing the um, uh, dictionary implicitly. So that's what we want. We don't want to configure anything explicit in the, in the, in the application. In terms of code, it looks like this. So I, I don't care much about how it is coded, but what's important to see there is it is just tuning a default dictionary. It is disabling some advanced feature uh, not yet supported, but uh, we are working on that and it will likely be supported in the near future like, like um, uh, cascade deletions. Uh, we are forcing the case to lower case, and we are forcing uh, all identifiers, column name, schema name, to be delimited by backtick, like in MySQL, which is the setup in RDB by default. And this is in OpenGPA, so next release will get it. So it will work out of the box without anything, without any knowledge. You will have your application running on RDB. In terms of data source definition, it is a standard data source definition. So this is using Apache Tommy uh, syntax, but it works with uh, Tomcat syntax or whatever you, you are using. The only specific thing is the uh, GDBC URL. So uh, I put some example there in comments. So there are the local case, indeed case, uh, very useful for tests. The uh, remote RDB standalone server, so uh, RDB server and your, uh, your host and port, or the zookeeper uh, case. Enrico spoke a, a bit about that. Uh, it's when you are in a in cluster mode. Uh, just a side note there, you can configure more or less that using standard GPA uh, properties in the persistence.xml, but you don't really know what you will get as pooling. So it's not recommended and it's better to inject the data source using an external configuration like that. In terms of uh, usage, uh, there are a few challenges. So the first one uh, I faced, <laughs> because for Enrico it was not one challenge, is that uh, I'm really used to H2, so it is quite fast. Uh, for unit test, it's, it's really awesome. Um, and it is light. If you download the jar, it's I don't recall, but a few megs. And the first time I downloaded RDB, it was uh, some 30 megs, something like that. And it was uh, it was slower, really slower. So we worked on that um, as well. And the here a summary of the um, uh, current state, or last week's state, <laughs> to be exact. Uh, so compared to H2, RDB is still uh, a bit slower. And actually, it's mainly the class loading because the big difference between H2 MDID and RDB MDID is that RDB is still using the network protocol. It is not using a remote um, connection. It is using a local connection, but it is serializing two bytes, as Enrico explained, whereas H2 is using uh, object reference passing uh, calls. So it's slower, but it's fast enough to be used and you can debug, you can do a test driven development. It's not, uh, it's not slow. It does not block you, uh, the small overhead you, you have using RDB in MDID mode. And you use the same database than in production. So it's a big advantage. Uh, an alternative when you are writing a persistence test is to use test container and run a Docker image with your real database. This way you test with the same database than in production. My school, for example. But in this case, you need to stop my school. It's very slow. And even if you are using a my school which is already started, it's the case in, in this table, RDB is not that far. Uh, in, and if you compare to an RDB remote, which is exactly the same case than the my school, 
Um, DB is faster as Enrico showed with uh, uh, your benchmark. So uh, it's a lot of uh, numbers, but at the end, yeah, RDB is a bit slower in test mode than uh, H2 or uh, uh, HSQL, for, for example, but it's fast enough to be used in test. And just to, so these figures were done on a small amount of data, really test data, but using it on a bit bigger application with a lot of tables, uh, the ratio are more or less the same. So on GPA, uh, it's really easy to set up now. Uh, it works out of the box with OpenGPA. With uh, Hibernate and Eclipse Sync, you need some tuning, but it can work as well. Uh, it's really interesting to use RDB because it can optimize your scalability. As Enrico said, it can be embedded, uh, it can be remote, uh, but uh, localized in a closed VPC. Um, and it's self-hostable, uh, which is really interesting because if you already uh, used a managed database in the cloud, it's very, 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 very expensive. Uh, just a small word on Kubernetes because it's what is used the, the most for new application. So uh, you can deploy your DB with Kubernetes. Uh, you need to use a persistence volume and a persistence volume claim. And the backup is managed either in uh, uh, a local disk, depending your cloud provider in S3, it can be NFS or Google storage. Uh, something a bit better, if you can use it, it's a stateful set. It's just combining the deployments of RDB, Bookkeeper, Zookeeper probably, and the persistence volume. Uh, there are some bugs on some providers, so I'm sure you can use them. Okay, so uh, I'll not spend a lot of time on this, but I leave um, what you have to, to keep in mind uh, with this part is that uh, you can write any application using persistence or a database with RDB. Uh, it will work smoothly in the cloud uh, and it is uh, really um, flexible and you can uh, uh, make it matching exactly your application, your SLA and your deployment which is very rare today. Often you have to use managed uh, databases or uh, pet support because it's, it's expensive. Uh, small note on uh, the fact it is open source and you can do PR on GitHub. It's really great. I did uh, a few and it's really smooth. And uh, staying on SQL, you keep the tools you are used to. So it's really, really good. So now I'll try to do a very quick demo in two minutes. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I took um, Antonio Goncalves pet store. So if you don't know it, it's a small uh, Java e demo application. And I use Tommy, uh, which is a e server we have at Apache. If you don't know it, you should Google it. <laughs> Yeah, we, we see that Tommy is starting. This part is, oh, it's too small again. <laughs> you can see here that this log, it's the embedded RDB, which is starting. And then the application. The application has a um, init SQL script uh, launched by uh, GPA, it's standard feature now. So we can see here all the insert uh, done automatically. So GPA is sending this insert on RDB. So very quickly, the application, oops, looking like that. Oh, too big now. Okay, so basically you, you can buy pet. So uh, I need to log in, I guess. Okay. No. Okay, up. you can uh, select any pet you want, add it to a cart and check out the cart. And uh, what's interesting is, so this application was written for a Wildfly, for a standard database, my, MySQL or uh, H2, I think. And here the search just returned the result and it is running an RDB. And I didn't modify the application. And if we go at the end, 
uh, yeah, we have the select there, which is a standard se select issued by uh, OpenGPA. So this part is really interesting. Uh, without doing anything, it is working. Another thing which is interesting, and I finish on that, is that it's, uh, you have a data source in terms of code, a standard data source. So it integrates with the ecosystem of uh, all libraries working with uh, data sources. So for instance, with micro profile, we can get metrics. So here, uh, I have uh, metrics about the pool of the data source, the current size, the max active, etc. And it integrates with micro profile. So here I have an endpoint checking the resources of my application, and here it is checking the data sources working. All that running on RDB. So uh, that's really the interesting part. You can deploy any. Ex you can even migrate existing application to RDB, uh, and it will be uh, quite smooth. That's it for me. I don't know if we have time for questions. <laughs> Enrico, you are muted, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much to everyone. Uh, Thank you, Roman, for talking with me about it. Uh, feel free to to uh, to connect with us on GitHub or on on Slack. Uh, we have a Slack channel um, about RDB inside the Apache Bookkeeper uh, workspace. Uh, so that's it. Um, uh, Bye to everyone. <laughs> Cheers. Bye, guys.